As it covers most of the outer surface of our body, the skin is tasked with many important functions, from preserving the integrity of our body by wrapping the tissues and organs in their place, acting as the first of many layers of protection from any foreign substances and mechanical stresses, to helping the temperature regulation of the body. Our skin consists of three different layers, each with their own components and functions. The deepest layer on the skin is called the hypodermis, also called subcutis or subcutaneous layer. This layer consists of adipose or fat tissue. Fat serves as a reserve energy source for humans and cushions the vital organs and structures inside from external pressure. A thicker fat layer hence means better protection for the body. However, it also increases the risks for metabolism diseases in the future. Several structures originate from the hypodermis and pass through the upper layers of the skin. For example, the hair follicles, a sac-shaped organ where the hair grows. It extends across layers to the skin surface and provides means to capture or release heat from the body. The nerve fibers also reach the dermis and epidermis layers to closely sense external stimulations. Here, larger blood vessels branch to the layers above as required. This is also the area where the needle is inserted for several types of injection. As the blood vessels here are less extensive, the injected substance is absorbed slowly to allow for a longer period of medicine delivery. The second layer, the dermis, is the thickest layer of our skin, around 3 mm over our backs. It consists of two layers, the papillary and reticular layer. Here, elastin and fibrillin microfibers join and form fibers that give the skin elasticity, while collagen fibers are present to give the structural support. The dermal collagen is also responsible for 90% of the skin's dry weight. If punctured, the cleavage of the skin that corresponds to the orientation of collagen fibers and the elastic fibers is called the Langer's line. It's an important mark for surgery, as wounds parallel to these lines will heal faster due to less tension. Numerous structures reside on this layer, with some open up to the upper layer and the surface of the skin. The sebaceous glands produce sebum to maintain your skin's moisture and prevent microorganism growth. Most hair follicles originate here. The sweat glands, consisting of two types, the eccrine glands, to help maintain bodily temperature by secreting more sweat to the skin surface that evaporates and removes heat, while the other one is the apocrine glands, which only begin to activate during puberty. It's mainly found in the armpit and genitals, producing fatty sweat that is broken down by the bacteria, which radiates that horrendous body odor. Blood vessels to supply nutrients and remove waste to nearby cells, and also to regulate heat by dilation or contraction. Lymphatic vessels that provide immune cells to fight infection. Not less important, different types of nervous structure are spread throughout the layer to give the skin its ability to sense. The hair follicle can detect slight touch via the root hair plexus. Meissner corpuscle detects indentation and slipping of objects. Persinian corpuscle detects vibration. Ruffini corpuscle detects stretch. And thermoreceptors sense warm and cold temperatures. Moving towards the superficial dermis layer, the papillary layer. Its raised dermal papillae complements the epidermal ridges from the epidermis layer, which give humans their unique fingerprints. The hemidesmosomes in the area bind keratinocytes in the stratum basale to the basement membrane above the papillary layer. Type 3 collagen runs along this layer to reinforce the skin barrier and to help maintain its hydration and elasticity. Papillary plexus from the vascular systems are also present to provide the superficial stratum basale with nutrients so they can keep producing new skin cells. When embarrassing things happen to you, the blush on your cheek is due to the dilations of the blood vessels here in the dermis layer. That concludes the two deeper layers of the skin. The uppermost layer, the one we see from outside, will be peeled off in the next video. Stay tuned. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.